I'm good. The Lord has been very faithful to me. And uh, I feel privileged for being part and parcel of the citizen of heaven. Today, we are, God wants us to hear more about him as a king. My sermon statement today is, God, you are the king from old. We are going to get our reading from the book of Psalms, chapter 74, verse 12 through 17. And we can lead, to get, can lead together. But you, O God, are my kings from old. You bring salvation upon the earth. It was you who split open the sea by your power. You broke the hands of the monster in the waters. It was you who crushed the head of Rathian and gave him as a food of the creatures of the desert. It was you who opened up springs and streams. You dried up the every flowing leaves. The day is yours, and yours also the night. You established the, light, the sun and moon. It was you who set all boundaries of the earth. You made both summer and winter. Shall we play? Heavenly Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we are so grateful for who you are and for what you have already done to our life. We are the Lord that have already laid from the ages and even today you are in the throne. We humble ourselves as we want to hear and to listen to your one. Speak to us because you are listening. For we pray in Jesus' holy and mighty name. Amen. As I have already said that we are talking about the king from old, the Lord God is our king and king from the old. In the Psalms, that are the Psalms chapter 74, verse 12 through 17, it serves as a reminder to us God is a king. When the affair of our life seems to be challenging, it's good to remember we have king in our midst. He is still on the royal throne. His throne has constantly transfer others' power. So it's a good way to remind ourselves that we have a king who is ready to reign, and to reign, he has already reigned from the beginning, even right now he is leaning, and even to the time to come, he is going to be on the throne. Today, we may not understand everything that is happening in our life, but there is a sure assurance of things that there is a king. We have a king who has not lost his power or his place. He is still on the throne. When things are happening, when we are going through the hard time, when we are going through the tough time, it is better and good for us to remember that he is still on the throne. He has not lost his power, nor he has not lost his position. The king, the one that we are talking about this, this time, we can see him, he has already solved many problems in the past. When the life seemed to be unbearable, he has already softened the ground and the life of the people. When people in the past were, were not enjoying peace, he has already given peace to his people. That's why when we remember, when we can see him, when we can understand him, we can have assurance 
we can, be, we can have a reason for us to rejoice and to be happy. That's a great encouragement that we have a king who has reigned from all generations. When we are having dark time, dark hours, when we are having hard time, it's good to remember the king has mercy. And when we remember the act of the former, uh, that is the former deed of the deliverance, we can be less be assured that he is going even right now to save us and also to make us uh, to have peace and to rejoice having seen the deliverance. One, when we are talking about the king, we were told in verse 12 that is, uh, he has a plan to bring, or to bring salvation upon the earth. The king is working out plan for my salvation. The king is working out plan for your salvation. The king is ready to answer when we are in great distress. Just like how it's happening in this country, when we, we have a, a, just a, a small distress, when we can see many people are asking the government of the day, Selikari's idea, is a common slogan, and we can even use it when we are drawing near to God, that is, we need your help, we need your intervention, for many things that we are passing through, you, our Lord, you, our King, we need your intervention. In the book of Psalms, chapter 5, verse 2, there is a cry of someone who was crying to the King, and he said, as I quote, listen to my cry for help. Listen to my cry for help my king and my god he was crying the psalmist was crying for help he was asking help not from any anybody else but from the king we are supposed even us today to cry to the king to come and help us no matter the magnitude of our problems is better to know where and whom to learn to. We are to go and whom to learn to. The psalmist cried to the king and uh, he was helped. Even us, when we need deliverance, when we need salvation, let us remember we have a king who has reigned for all generations. From the time immemorial, from the time of the creation, even now, even before creation, he was still the king, holding and uh, controlling everything. Uh, the Lord sometimes to deliver us, to give us salvation, he does not need any effort of the human being. He does not need even assistance, either from the president or from the ministers, or from any other person in this world to deliver us and to give us victory. As we can see in the, with the children of Israel, how he delivered them from the bondage of Egypt, not through the strength of the trusted man Moses, nor through the Lord that was uh, the, that the shepherd staff carried by Moses, but by his own strength. He did it by his own strength. That's why, well, as you can see them uh, moving from the Egypt all the way to, to Israel, to, to the Promised Land, you can, we can see how God, he remained being their source of help. He remained being there for them. At any time that they cried to him, he responded. As you can see in the book of the Exodus, 
chapter 3. That is, uh, he said, I have already heard the cry of my people Israel. You can underline, I have already heard the cry of my people. So God himself is talking about my people. You have already heard him. And he said Moses to come and to tell the Pharaoh to let the people go so that they may go to worship him in the wilderness. Well, the, the same same king, when they were in the wilderness, when the, his people were thirsty in the wilderness, they cried, murmured, and make a lot of noise to Moses. God himself had an answer. He knew the best way to refresh them, and he instructed Moses how to, he is going to refresh them and quench their thirst. It is a responsibility of every king to see that the people live in comfort. When we have, uh, when we have drought, it is a responsibility of the king to supply water to the subject. When we, have, um, when we do not have sufficient food, it is a responsibility of the king to supply food for them here when uh, they were in the wilderness. He was their king. He was their lord. So he instructed Moses how he is going to, to provide water. He told him how he is going to, uh, to provide water from the law when here he prepared a fountain for his people, for his people to drink together with the cake. So, as you can see in the book of Exodus, chapter 5, chapter 17, verse 5 and verse 6, we can lead together. I will stand here before you, that is, God is talking to Moses. I will stand here before you by the lock at Horeb. Strike the lock and the water will come out from the, for my people to drink. Then Moses laid his hand and struck the lock twice with his staff. Water crashed out and community and livestock drank. He refreshed them with the water from the fountain. He melt the lock for his people. When I think about King of God, when I think about you, O my King, you did always marvel me. My heart is um, feel that I cannot fail to, to say that you are good because you did amazing. You have already helped the people of Israel. Even today, you are there, help me. Even when they, they were passing Liva Jordan, with your power, you separated the Liva Jordan so that the people may pass on the dry, shore, on the dry ground as recorded in the book of Joshua, chapter 13 and verse 18. That is, as a priest stepped on the Liva Jordan, its water, flowing downstream will be cut off and stirred up in a heap. All Israel, all Israel pass by on a, on a dry ground. Your work, your deed is amazing. How you love your subject. How you want us to recognize you. How you want us even to, to know more, more the psalmist in verse 15 lightly said, It was you who opened up springs and stream. You dried up the ever flowing rivers. That the deed of the Lord. That is open as we have already heard in the book of Exodus and in the book of Joshua how he opened the fountain 
for his people to drink. He's a caring God. He's a caring master. He has our needs in his heart. Also, he led in verse 16, the day is yours, and you are yours also the night. You established the sun and the moon. It was who set all the boundaries of earth. You made both summer and winter. When we are hungry, thirst, and even enemies allowed us, it is better to remember the deed of the great king, how he led the Israelites Israel, to succeed in a revolution as they were occupying the promised land. They, they did it through your hand. You used Joshua, as you already told Joshua, that for him is only to take courage. For him is only to take courage, and you are going to deliver salvation unto him. You are going to deliver them. You are going to help them as they occupy the land. So, when we look unto you, you delivered away Jebusites, Hittites, among other tribes in Canaan, who are the thorn of flesh to your people. When we trust you and we have faith, you are going to do wonders because you are still the king. From the old, even now, you are still the king. As a king, your power is our strength. Your power is our strength. We need only to lean on you, O oh, our king. You are the one that you lay from the generation to generation. When many people depended on, on, on you, you, you empowered them so that they continue with this journey. When we depend on you, when we put our trust on you, you have already promised that you are going to empower us. No, no matter the, the height or the mountain, no matter the weight or the burden, no matter the sunshine or the rainfall, nothing that is going to, to stress us because we know we have the king who is, who is there to empower us, who is there to carry all the burden because you are so good. It is also your office, your cabinet that are discussing how you are going to protect and save your subject, us. You are not silent. You are doing a lot of consultation in heaven. How you are going to come and protect us and save us from all kinds of, um, of, uh, of sickness, from all diseases. You are there, ready to come and heal us. You have a solution. You have an answer to every crime that we are crying. You are the one that already told us that you are going to protect us from the enemies. You are going to fight for us all the battles. You are the one that already promised that you are going to fight for us. As our duty is only to wait and trust and to celebrate the victory that you are going to to give us. We have a duty as a citizen of heaven because we are not independent. We are citizen of heaven on earth. We are the subject of the kingdom of God to follow each and every command of the kingdom. You have already given us the decree. You have already given us a statue. You have already told us what we are supposed to do and the consequence of each and every step that we are making. In the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, there is a blessing for them that are going to obey you. From verse 15 up to aloud verse 30, there is a punishment in the form of curse, them that are not going to honor you 
as a king. So therefore, we need to honor the Lord and give him the total respect he deserves. Let us obey him. Our duty is only to obey his command. He has already commanded us. Our duty is only to follow his command, to follow his ways, to follow his uh, direction, so that we enjoy and be blessed in this world. In the book of uh, Isaiah, chapter 1, verse 19, there is a blessing that you are proclaiming for them that are going to hear and follow your word. So we have a duty once again, one, to obey him, and also to worship and praise him. It's for this great reason for us to worship him, because he is the Lord. We need to bow down before him in supplication, in adoration, talking about how good he is. He, need, he is ready to listen to our voices. We need to shout the praises for, to him in the Most High. We need to shout and let the people know that we have the king who is leaning from the, uh, from the beginning up to now and even time to come. Paul, in the book of Ephesians, chapter 3, verse 14 and 17, he said, For this listen, I kneel before the Father. I kneel before the Father. So I kneel before the King who is able to do that is who is able to do more than all we ask or imagine according to his power. So God being the king, he is able to do more than what we can ask or imagine according to his power. So when we, we experience the deed of the Lord, we are supposed to bow before him in that giving. We are supposed to worship him. We raise our hands and tell him how grateful he is, how caring he is, and also it's good for us to remember his promises. Because his promises are ye and amen. His promises are good because they give us power to continue. He is still on the throne. When he says that he is going, he has a plan to save us. That is exactly what he is going to do. When he says that he has a plan for the for the escape, he is going to do that. When he says that he is, he is planning how he is how he is Going, he is going to come and uh, heal us. We need to trust. Let us trust all his promises. Let us trust all his promises. Because his promise, all his promises are ye and amen. And it's for good for his people. So, this moment, as I conclude, is better one. We know we have a king. He has done mighty things in the past. He is doing good things now, and he will do good things. The other thing, he has a plan for our salvation. He wants to, uh, uh, to empower us so that we continue in the journey. And we have our responsibility. One, to obey him. To follow his decree and to, uh, to put our trust in his promises. When we do that, we'll just be together with the psalmist, singing, saying that, my king from old, my king of old, that you are the one that you are going to bring salvation upon us. We are going to, to enter that choir to praise the Lord because he is our king the King of kings, the Master who never fail his people. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
We worship you, dear Father, for your word. Help us to understand that you are the king and you have a good plan for salvation. You have a good plan for healing. You have a good plan even for feeding us because we need your power. For we pray in Jesus' holy and mighty name. Amen.